What's up y'all, Quentin here with Catfish Karma and in today's video I'm going to show you what is without a doubt the easiest and most efficient way to catch, clean, and cook North America's most hated fish, the Silver Asian Carp. It starts right now. All right, y'all, as I mentioned in the intro, today's video is all about how to catch, clean, and cook America's most hated fish, the Asian carp. Not only that, but I'm gonna show you the absolute easiest, most efficient, most quick and guaranteed way to do all three of those things. We won't need a rod and reel. We won't need any kind of terminal tackle. No bait. You don't even need a boat, and I'll get to that part later in the episode, but right now we're gonna go to the front and we're gonna talk about the only three items that we do need to do all three of those things. All right, so when it comes to the catching part of this deal, the reason it's so simple to get these Asian carp and, and, and the reason that we don't need all that tackle that I talked about is because Asian carp are true filter feeders. They literally swim around all day with their mouth open, filtering out uh, basically microorganisms in the water to get their nutrients. They never stop, they feed all day long 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year and that's part of why they're such a hated species they literally out compete all the other small bait fish that are native to our country but the good thing about that is it makes them really easy for us to catch because they're super prevalent they're really easy to to pattern and target we'll get to that in in some detail later but right now we're going to catch them and we're going to do that with a cast net there are other ways to catch Asian carp, but for me, the most guaranteed, the, the quickest, the, the most efficient is with a cast net. We can use a cast net from the bank, from a dock, uh, along dams and spillways, which are probably the number one way for you to target Asian carp if you don't have a boat. When you're selecting a cast net, I highly recommend you throw the biggest cast net that you're capable of throwing and you also want one that's fairly heavy that said you don't want it to be too heavy because sometimes you'll have to throw multiple times in order to get the, the asian carp that you're after and if the net's too heavy that can become an issue that's part of why i like this net so much uh this is a ahi net it's the the pro 200 i believe it's 1.3 pounds per foot that's what i like about it it's kind of that middle road. This is a 10 foot net. I'm just going to use the 50 50 method to throw this net. I've taught that method many times here on the channel. Uh, you can look up uh, videos for how to do that here on my channel. Just, uh, just search 50 50 cast net method. I love that method because, as you noticed, I didn't have to do. I didn't have to spin, I didn't have to throw it hard, I didn't have to put part of the net in my mouth, I didn't have to throw it over my shoulder. I'm in about 30 feet of water here, and this net, it's already at the bottom. It hit right, <laughs> right, well, it hit just on cue, so it sinks good and fast. Not that time, let's go a little closer to the bank and I'll throw it again. And look here, we've got, uh, I think we've got our first Asian card. There we go. Two throws. And we've already got enough Asian carp to feed, I don't know, two to four people. All right, check it out, y'all. Two throws, one Asian carp at about 10 pounds. When filleted out, this will easily feed about four people. I'm gonna throw once or twice more to get another one of these or maybe more because when I cook it, I wanna show you guys a couple of different options. All right, y'all, I think that was four throws, and I've got two Asian carp in about the 10 to 12 pound range, which is 
more than enough to feed two households. Keep in mind though that Asian carp of that size are only about a year old. Depending on what river system you're going to catch them in, a one-year-old Asian carp could weigh anywhere from about 8 pounds up to 12, maybe 13 pounds. In fact, Asian carp of only two to three years old can commonly weigh up to 30 pounds. That's another reason that it's a great idea to target these to feed your family. They're just an overwhelmingly good resource for nearly free protein to put on your table. That said, let's go to part two of this, the cleaning part, and it's so easy. All right, y'all, remember when I told you that this whole process, the catching, the cleaning, and the cooking only requires three items? Well, this is item number two. You're gonna need a knife, and for this fish, I recommend just a big, robust knife. It can be serrated or non-serrated, but honestly, on an Asian carp, I prefer a knife with some serration. It really gets through the, uh, through the bones real quick. Now, a lot of this process I can't show you because the YouTube moderators get a little weird about blood and cleaning, well, pretty much anything. So I'm gonna have to describe some of it to you and, and show some of it to you. The most important part of the cleaning process is bleeding this fish out. I literally just caught them. It's not even been 10 minutes. This one back here is still flopping. This one was flopping seconds ago. That's key because Asian carp go bad really quick. So what I want you to do is catch your Asian carp and before you take them anywhere, no matter if you're, if you're catching them in a boat or on the bank, before you go anywhere, I want you to kill them by bleeding them out. The best way to do that is to cut a ring around their tail. See how I'm holding the tail here? I'm gonna take this knife and I'm gonna start cutting into the tail and I'm gonna cut a ring all the way around so that the only thing holding it together is the spine and then I'll give it a twist. When I do that, this tail's gonna come off and literally all of, the, all of the blood in his body is gonna evacuate in just seconds, minutes at the most. It's all gonna come out, he's gonna die. And the big, the big advantage to doing that is when we fillet this meat, it's gonna be super clean, super white. Uh, it, it's gonna have no smell whatsoever. Then when we get to the cooking process, again, you're gonna have white, clean, delicious, tasty, protein-rich meat. So I'm gonna do that now, and after he's bled out, I'll show you how I'm gonna fillet it. Okay, y'all, I've taken about five or 10 minutes to let gravity do its work on those fish as they hang there in the back of the boat. They're fully bled out and ready to be processed. And during that five or 10 minutes, I moved the boat and I put out some catfish rods. They've all got cut bait on them, and I'm hoping to catch a giant Mississippi River blue cat if that sounds like content that you might be interested in, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my future uploads. Let's get going on these Asian carp, shall we? All right, y'all, as I mentioned earlier, I've got to be careful on exactly how much detail I include in this part of the process because YouTube has gotten pretty tricky on what you can and cannot show when it comes to processing a fish or an animal. Uh, I know it doesn't make sense, but that's where we're at in today's world. I'm switching from this giant knife with the serrations to a smaller knife, basically just to show you that you don't have to have a giant knife, you don't have to have serrations. I believe this is just a six inch fillet knife, maybe a seven inch, somewhere in that range. This is really simple for what I'm gonna do with it. Basically, we just wanna knock the slabs off of this fish. We're gonna fillet it like we would any other fish. Yes, there are bones throughout an Asian carp, but we're gonna cut right through those, and when I get to the cooking process of this, you're not gonna believe how easy it is to manage those bones. So, basically we're gonna make one cut right through here all the way down to the spinal section, and then the full length of the fish, knocking the slab off of this fish. So I'm gonna blur that out, cut this off, and show you the finished product. All right, in less than one minute per fish, I have taken all four slabs off of both of those Asian carp, and they look delicious, and I'm about to show it to you, but before I do, I wanted to point out that absolutely 0% of these fish is gonna go to waste because it just so happens that America's most hated fish, the Asian carp, make excellent catfish bait. So I'll be chunking up every bit of that and putting it back in the river and turning it into catfish. It's pretty cool that we can use 100% of America's most hated fish to our benefit if we choose to. That said, check out the quality of the meat that comes off of an Asian carp. By the way, these are, these are silver Asian carp. There are other species, but silver carp is the most common. It's gonna be the easiest for you to find. 
If you live anywhere near water in between the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains and the water that you fish happens to be remotely connected to the Missouri River, the Mississippi River, the Ohio River, I mean, <laughs> Tennessee River, any of the major rivers, you either already have Asian carp at your disposal or you will soon. Let me show you one more cool thing about this. You'll notice that the skin and scales are still on here. That's because with the cooking method that I'm about to show you, you don't have to remove those. Nor are the bones a problem. I'm going to show you how to deal with all that with no effort whatsoever. And that's coming up next. All right, y'all, we're back here at my house, ready to knock out the cooking portion of this video. You might remember that in the beginning of the video, I told you we only need three things for all of this. We needed a cast net, we needed a knife, and we needed a fire because I was going to cook this fish over an open fire. It's one of the more fun ways and easiest ways to do it. But it rained all night last night and about half of today. So this wood is just not going to light well. So we're going to go over here to the grill and we're going to get this done. All right, y'all, this part of the process is what's really going to separate this particular video on eating Asian carp from the other videos that I've done about eating Asian carp, because we're going to do this half shell style. Uh, I learned that from eating redfish. A friend of mine had told me, you know, it's real simple. You just knock the fillets off the fish, throw them on the grill skin side down, and the, the skin does a lot of the work. It's going to protect the meat from the grill or the flames if you're going to do it on an open fire, which I highly recommend. So the skin's going to protect it, it's going to keep it from sticking, and it just makes things super easy because we just knocked the, knocked the fillets off. These I left whole, obviously, and I'll show you why in a minute. And then these I separated into portions. You know, we can feed four people here and another four people here real easily. And all that's left now is a little bit of seasoning. I'm going to hit these with just salt. I'm going to hit these with salt. And then a little, I don't know, a liberal amount of chili lime. I don't know if you guys have ever had Trader Joe's chili lime, but it's delicious. And that's it. If you've got some chips and salsa and a beverage, that's a bonus, but it's not required. Let's go to the grill. All right, so the thermometer is not working on my grill, but basically the target temperature is 400 degrees. And so, I don't know, mine's probably close to that right now. It's not super critical. I've cooked them at 500, it's fine. I've cooked them at 350, it's fine. But basically, somewhere around 400, 400 degrees is ideal. And that's it. Throw them on the grill. Leave them alone. Don't mess with them. Don't touch them. Don't turn them. Don't do anything except enjoy your beverage, your chips, and your salsa. Come back in about 25 minutes. All right, y'all. While that fish is doing its thing over there on the grill, I wanted to talk for just a second about cooking fish on an open fire. Because I'm sure there's probably some people tuning in who have never done this before, and fish is a delicate protein. So if we were cooking that Asian carp over this fire that's not lit right now, Basically, what I'd do is I'd get a nice roaring fire going. I'd probably add wood to it a couple times so that I had a good bed of coals. While that fire was heating up, I'd probably take some nice straight pieces of wood, like this stick right here, and I probably would have soaked it in water. And just a few, you know, four or five of them would be plenty. And once the, once the fire had turned into a bed of coals, I would take those wet sticks out and just set them across the fire and lay that fish across the sticks, skin side down, and that's all there is to it. I'd just watch the color of the fish, and it's going to go from that sort of translucent look to solid, like, bleachy white looking. Once it looks like that, I'd pick at it with a fork and see if it flakes good. If it does, it's done. Another way to do it is I keep a bunch of slabs around like this. This is pecan, something I cut over a year ago with a chainsaw. I've got tons of these around. And this is a good way to cook fish uh, if you're not doing half shell style. Let's just say you've got some regular boneless fillets of catfish. I soak these in water ideally for a full day before I, I cook, but even just a few hours will help. And this, this acts as a, well it's kind of like skin and scales. You can put that fish directly on this and it doesn't stick to it. It doesn't burn. It's just a, it's a really neat way to protect your fish from the flames or from your grill. So that's how I like to do it. Let's go check on the fish. All right, y'all, our actual cooking time is about 28 minutes. 
And the way I like to determine if it's done is I just take a fork, push it in and give it a twist. And if it easily tears, I don't know if you can see that, if it easily tears, it is done. Push it in, give it a twist. Look at how perfectly white that meat is, y'all. And I challenge you to find, wow, well, it's coming apart so well. I challenge you to find a freshwater fish with cleaner, whiter, flakier meat. And I dug into that one again to show you this. That's the bone that comes out of Asian carp. It's a Y bone. That's why these fish are difficult to fillet. In fact, they're not difficult, they're a complete pain to fillet. But you see how it came out completely intact? That's another sign that this fish is done. I'm gonna try it right now. Oh, so good. It's so mild, completely tender. Oh, it's so good. But you saw how that bone came out, right? Just with the insertion of the fork and a twist, not only did it separate the meat, but it exposed the bone. So depending on who I was serving this fish to, I might take these individual portions and put them on a plate, right? Put their sides and their protein on there and plate them and present them that way. But to be honest, my favorite way to present the fish is in these whole pieces on a big serving platter of some sort. Depending on the guests, of course. Not all people would be comfortable with that sort of that communal eating. But let's say it's just me and Victoria or, you know, guests we know well. There's, there's something that's, I don't know, uniting about sharing, about sharing a course or about sharing a platter. But no matter how you plate it and present it for yourself or for your guests, I promise you, if you'll give Asian carp a try, I just don't see how I just don't see how you can go wrong. I don't see how you can, if you like fish, I don't see how you you won't be a fan of Asian carp if you try it this way. Super simple to catch, ridiculously easy to clean or process, and I mean you can't ask for easy, something easier to cook throw it on the grill, and forget about it for about 28 minutes. I'm going to take this in and enjoy it. I appreciate you guys watching. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future uploads. See ya!